Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about the first week a CISO, what it does in the organization. As it varies from organization to organization and CISO to CISO, this is just a video in which I'm sharing my experience. Might be other CISO has a different experience. Might be this video is useful for you also if you're planning to become a CISO in future organization. So if you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to make sure do not miss my future videos which I'm making on CISOs. And my name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. See, the first week when you uh, join as a CISO in any organization, okay, the most important thing that you have to do is to meet your stakeholders. Okay, so you have to set up a meeting with your team, all key stakeholders and corporate leadership and use this time to introduce yourself and get to know about the people. You know, it's better you can basically prepare questions. Okay, it's my suggestion. You can basically prepare some questions. This is my suggestion. Prepare some questions in advance which give you clarity, which, which set your clarity. Okay, what is your expectation? Like personal introduction, business roles and responsibility, pain points, business KPI, KRI, and the relationship with the security department. In this meeting, you see, in first week, like first three days and four days, you will do regular meetings. Okay, More, normally the meeting will be for 30 minutes. So in this meeting, so you will need to assess the politics and rule of internal power, uh, understand your bosses reporting line the overall structure of the team you are part of it and the key players around you as well as the current structure of your own team this is my suggestion okay this is something which i did when i joined uh, one company as a part-time CISO. Uh, if you talk about the priority wise the first thing what i did i met human resource department that is the first thing i did and the reason is very simple because I would like to know the organization chart. I would like to know the company's policies. I would like to know about uh, the norms, regulations, which employees are compliance with. I would like to know the reporting structure. So in something is what happened and to whom we need to contact. So who are the counterparts? That visibility I got from the human resource department. This is something which I did first. Before meeting my own security team, I met the HR and I understand about the entire organization chart. I understand the reporting lineups. I understand the different type of bosses, different type of stakeholders and all that. And it will be great. You can basically request the entire organization chart on an email directly from HR, which can be act like a proof for you that this is something a reporting chart we directly got from the HR. So I'm not working on, on, and on any wrong reporting chart, which is not part of our organization. So that's why make sure whatever the necessary documentation you are collecting make sure it should be collected on an email which is considered as an evidence and it reflect your uh, you know uh, working style okay second thing what you have to do is to meet your own team now when i say your own team in some companies what happen is we have a people who working in a CISO office itself who basically delegate the work of CISO, or you have a SOC team Okay, some, in some companies, in my cases where I'm working uh, as a part-time, so SOC is reporting to me. Uh, we have a VAPT team, which is reporting to me. Then we have assurance team, which is reporting to me. So we have a different type of teams. Okay, in some organization, CISO has a limited team. In some organization, in service industry, CISO is basically taking care of the security operations, VAPT, forensic strategy, and all that. So it is very important to meet your own team. Okay, and my suggestion is that in that meeting, when you're doing a, this group meeting and all that, be a listener. Okay, understand all the problems, challenges, uh, add some humor, make the session interesting. Okay, make them comfortable. So, you know, uh, they can be very clear with your thought process and all that. So, be silent, understand what they're trying to convey, what challenges they have. So, that's the most important pointer we have that we need to understand. Uh, one more important thing, this meeting when we're talking about as during a, a pandemic time, it was an online meeting as the things getting normal, it's better to do face to face meeting. Face to face meeting is basically give the better visibility. Okay, face to face meeting. 
okay so by this way it is basically ideal to gawk the personality hear the grievances and it is obviously goes both way and your staff will forge their first impression of your thoughts those meetings so don't talk too much simply ask them what they expect from you and listen to them okay so my suggestion is that uh you know it should be a face to face meeting so once you done with the meeting with hr you done the meeting with your own team the third most important thing you need to plan in the first week or second week is the meeting with all the business heads service head service owners functional managers okay that's the most important thing and the reason is very simple is that that it give you the clarity about what kind of a business they are doing okay and uh, you will get to know how the business basically works what kind of a service functions we have like siem services incident management services chain management services configuration management services okay um during the meeting with business head you can start by uh, you know by understanding the business side of the equation like what are the availability requirement for your business what is the revenue streams from the business functions what information is captured or contained on the servers are these regulatory requirement is your business is compliance with any kind of a regulatory requirement is your business demand any kind of a regulatory requirement because as a cso uh, you need to make sure you know your organization should be compliant with regulatory your information security best practices or information security function should be compliant with the regulatory requirements because that's something you cannot ignore so when you having this deep detail business meetings you will understand the finance part you know expectations possible risk previous reports about how the information security impact the business revenue streams and all that so that kind of a visibility we get when you having a meeting with the business heads and when you having a meeting with their uh, heads and uh, process heads and all that collect all the documentations and better collect all the documentations on a email now one is aspect is business side one is basically technical side okay like is there in test environment we have do we have a disaster recovery requirement do we have a backup sites do we have a last dr test that we will get from the functional managers like we have a assurance lead we have a bcp dr lead so we can request all the process documentations which give you clarity about how the process work it is it is good to collect all those documentations so once you have a understanding with the business how it works what is the revenue then it is very very important to have a meeting with the legal team compliance team legal counsels mostly they are the one who reports to assurance which is a second line uh, second line of defense understand what kind of a regulations the company need to be comply what what are the law what are the challenges any kind of a security breach we face in past any kind of a liabilities any kind of a penalty we have face in past any regulation which restricting our functions any regulations which impacting our operations and see in this meeting sometime you know you will get a idea about the challenges and problem they are facing i'll tell you one thing i have i have i'm having a meeting with uh, uh data privacy officer and uh, he was explaining about prob you know this kind of a technology i don't know how to comply with gdpr so i just set for uh uh two uh, two two hours and i find a solution and i provide him solution so this is how i create a first impression as a good impression he was literally struggling with uh, you know how can we comply this technology with gdpr requirement so i provide him my checklist which i used for my consulting requirement and he was very happy and after that we had a very good discussion so during this meeting if they present some problems or they they are struggling with some existing problems on their area if you can help them if you can solve them this is one of the starting way to build the relation okay because they understood that okay he, he, that person basically helped you when when the person need so by this way you can build the good terms that that shows your leadership skills that shows your mentor skills that shows your uh you know you influence your decision so that's a most important thing so collect all the regulatory requirements legal documents slas stakeholders requirement corporate balance so all those things you can collect from the legal team the most important and best person uh, in the organization with whom you need to build a good trust is internal audit see they are the third line of defense in the organization and they don't report to anyone in the organization except they directly go to the board of directors in the company even they do the audit of ceo so the best uh, transparent report uh, unbiased report you will get from the internal audit you can ask you know 
in your internal audit of five year cycle have you conducted any isms audit any security audit any process audit do you discover any kind of findings on security area and you can also collect the other process document audit reports which give you better visibility and assurance is second line of defense in some cases ciso uh ciso so assurance team report to ciso so you can have a meeting with assurance team where you get the risk management details uh process details third party risk assessment details iso certifications so all those things you will get so what happen is from this particular meeting the possible outcome is that you will have to find your way or build your alliance and become the great ciso that industry need in going forward so ultimate goal in this entire meetings is to get the necessary data you want for the systems okay to build the strategy or build the gaps so this is all the outcome you will get especially in the assurance team case you will get the report of the of the third party reports vendor reports vendor compliance reports any issue with the past vendor with security acquisition so that kind of information we get collect as much as documentation about the company okay writing it does not mean it happens go look and verify so once you collect the document you need to validate those document so this is my suggestion okay let's move to the next part so now you have done with the meeting you have done with the meeting you collect all the details okay while making uh while having a meeting you made your own notes pointers okay so what is next the next is whatever the documentation you have requested you received okay so i'm talking about this one first week activity okay it might extend till second week so now you are in a stage where you get documentation because you did the meeting in the past which was 30 minutes meeting with each business holders or 15 minutes and all the pointers you note down all the requested documentation you got it now we need to work on the documentation part so the question here is how to start first most important thing you have to do is to review the existing policies which can be your information security that is something information security policy because that give the visibility about information security governance then it governance policies then the corporate policies then other policies and understand what is the intent what is the agenda they have is the policy is effective is policy revised all those things then review the major process documentations collect the samples and check whether it is working as per the requirement example in one of my uh, uh meeting i requested to review the change management process documentation and in one of the requirement in the documentation it is clearly mentioned that change need to be closed in two days or three days so i i i checked some samples i could i found that okay there's a huge gap between what is agreed in the process and what is delivered there are some changes which is open from last five days okay so we can review the process documentations and it is not about change management process we also have a security process like security operation process document then we have a risk management process document then we have a uh, incident management process document so whatever the security related process documentations you have or the previous ciso who prepared or if you joining a new company then you have to build this process documentation we creating a uh, process documentation for security also for your information idm process security incident management process incident management process problem management process so we have to review all the documentation to just check whether it is valid all the data we collecting we review those data we we'll look to the we we'll look for the historical security incidents what kind of a incident happen and how they basically handle those issues what are the challenges they had okay how they basically tackle that post mortem reports we called post incident report we called is the incident has been closed in a defined slas and if not then what was the uh, backfire so all those reports and what was the action plan what was the role of a ciso so that can be a great learning for you challenges during that time so make sure this similar incident should not be happen and if it happen you should be in the position to handle those things apart from that review the internal audit reports so during the internal audit reports we'll want to make friends with your internal audit teams as i said okay and view them as a strategic partner to advance your program goals to do this make sure you put addressing the audit findings at the top of your list you you won't want to appear on a list to a senior management or the governing bodies the leader who is uh you know adamant on their management action plan so in uh, audit reports internal audit reports play a very important role in improving your cyber security or information security management program okay understand their perspective what kind of findings they have identified 
what kind of a action plan they have created when they did follow up how serious was the company in closing those gaps okay so these kind of a things we get it is very important as a cso you need to have a very good understanding of reviewing the balance sheet you need to understand the last year financial report what was the profit because based on the profit only you will convince the management for the security solutions and all that so understand how the security impact the uh, organization is a security generated revenue how the security created a value how the security department creating a value for the organization what was the budget do we have any do we face any kind of business loss because of security issues and is it happen multiple time and it happens you know any action plan has been taken so that is why we have to review the balance sheet as a good cso you need to have a good understanding of balance sheet my suggestion even when you going for any interviews and all that you have access to the balance sheet that give you visibility and also very important to review the incident and bcp reports last testing report of bcp is the test went successful so all these documentations is very important for review then based on this documentation again conduct the gap assessment to check what is the current controls they have see you 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 will receive the last uh, security assessment report but as a cso we should never trust someone else security work my suggestion is that so what i did i reconducted the assessment in the organization where i was checked that whether all the companies controls are compliance with their define regulatory or define standard all because when you join a cso in any company okay you need to create a framework which has a list of control which is compliance with the uh, uh, with the regulatory business requirements and all that so same thing i did i penned down the regulatory requirement i penned down the uh, the standard controls and based on that i again performed the gap assessment and strange part was that i was able to discover some new gaps if i trust the old report and based on that i will plan my new action plan i won't i will be a bad cso a good cso is the one which validated everything because it's clearly say that writing it does not mean happens go look and verify so in my next series next video i'm planning to discuss some about the security strategy plan how to create based on the gap assessment so stay tuned and do let me know how do you find this series how do you find this video and if you're new to my channel do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on ciso what i'm been thank you goodbye